Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, my name's Sam. I've worked in the paid media industry for about 11 years now. I'm just going to touch on some of the stuff that the guys spoke about previously, because for me, within paid media, it, there's so much stuff that changes. Every single month, something new comes out. In 2015, Google actually launched over 1,000 changes to their platform and their interface, which is, is huge, right? So it makes it quite difficult for us to try and keep up with everything that's changing. Um, so what I want to try and do today is talk you through some of the stuff that's come out recently, some of the stuff that's still in beta in some of the platforms, and also where I think paid media is going to be going over the next few years. But if we start just by looking at what paid ads used to look like, right? So back in 1996, Google launched first search engine, and they didn't actually have any adverts when they first came out. So GoTo, actually uh, now known as Yahoo, they came out two years later in 1998. And in the same year, they actually were the first ones to launch with any paid adverts within their search results. And they looked like this. Awful. Two years after that, in 2000, in October, uh, that's when AdWords actually launched. And that was the real game changer. That's when things really started to kick up a notch. Because now, we're actually seeing ads that are looking like this. Now, they're not too dissimilar to what we're seeing now. Like you've still got the ad there. You've still got the headline, the description, and the URL that's going through to the site. But I think when you now look at a search results page, that's where we're starting to see differences. So these are results taken from years and years back now, back in year 2000. And we can actually see, we've still got the ads at the top and on the right-hand side. Obviously, we've lost the right-hand side ads now. But you can see how prominent those ads are. They're really, really clearly ads. They're labeled as ads. They've got different colors around them. And if you flash forward to this year and look at what a search result now looks like, it's really, really difficult to see where the ads are. They're blending in more and more in the search results. And I think that's one of the key things that we're going to see more of. So moving into 2004, that's when Facebook came on the scene. And right near the start of when they launched the platform, they actually had adverts. They were called flyer ads. And that's what you're seeing over on the right-hand side of the screen here. So they're the same as banner ads that we're seeing in there today, but they are very, very clearly ads. But again, a lot of people don't really realize that Facebook had ads right back at the start. So after Facebook came on the scene, that's when things really stepped up a notch. And you can see on this timeline that I've put together just how much that ramps up after 2004. We can see a lot of changes have happened. Now, I haven't mapped out everything, but just some of the key things that have happened in the major platforms. So you're looking at Facebook acquiring Instagram and WhatsApp. Google acquiring ad, um, YouTube. So there's a lot of things that have happened, and this is going to continue to evolve as we move forward. Now, the key thing that has changed is the level of technology. These platforms know so much about consumers and about visitors that come onto websites. It's scary when you start digging into some of this stuff. Now, this is the thing that's going to continue to change. This is the thing that's going to continue to evolve. So it's not necessarily going to see new platforms coming into play, but the technology behind those platforms is going to get smarter and smarter and smarter. You've only got to watch the 2017 Google Marketing Next event that took place last month. Now, Google do this event every single year. And they get everybody together, and they live stream an event to talk to us about some of the features and the, uh, and the launches that are going to come out over the following 12 months. So if you haven't watched this, even if you're not doing PPC, it's really have a look at this. Watch this video, because there's so much incredible stuff, and you start to really realize just how much the, the platforms are evolving. Now, the big thing that has changed, right? Going back to the year 2000, when AdWords first came out, we were really, really keyword-centric. We needed to focus on what keywords are going to drive traffic through to the site and display the right ads with those keywords. Now, that's not gone away. But the biggest change that we're now seeing is the addition of audience data. Nobody is running a PPC campaign now without actually having audience data backing it up. We can now show different ads to people that have been on a site before. We can show different ads to people that are already customers, different ads to prospects. And I think that's going to continue to evolve, because we're now targeting audiences, not just clicked. So in the next few slides, I just want to talk about some of the stuff that's been launched recently, some of the stuff that's in beta. And I've tried to tie it back into some brands just to try and give you an idea of how the strategy could be actually applied to a real life business. So let's start by looking at Google. One of the more recent launches that we saw, I think it was December last year, was Google promoted pins. And what this allows Google to do 
is show ads within the Maps listings so that you can actually pay to play to be there. Obviously, Google Maps has been free for, for years and years and years, and now they're starting to monetize it. Previously, they said there would only be one advert there. We're now seeing two. So in this example here with Pure Gym, Pure Gym may have ranked organically for the search term of Gym Leads, but now they've been ranking position three because um, David Lloyd and the Gym have taken up the first and second place. So Pure Gym could overtake them if they wanted to by putting a paid media strategy in place to target these, uh, these areas where they want to boost their, their visibility within the Maps listings. And that's what Google Promoted Pins can do for a business. Next up, this was something that actually came out of the Google Marketing Next event. So this is Google Optimize. Now, they used to have a platform similar to this where you can basically A-B split test landing pages that you're sending traffic to or different sections of websites that you're sending traffic through to which is brilliant, right? We spend so much time and effort trying to create targeted campaigns, pick the right keywords, write the right ad text, and we're sending it through to a website that's not going to convert. If you can make small changes to a web page, your conversion rate may go up, and this is what this platform is designed to do. So Pittman Training could use this by showing a different contact form. So they could show 50% of the traffic one contact form, 50% another contact form. Add or remove a few of the fields in the form and see what that does to your overall conversion rate. Another platform that came out of the Google, Optim uh, the, Google Ad uh, the Google Marketing Next event last month was Google Attribution. This is something that advertisers have been calling out for for months and months and months. They started going down the route of being able to show us different levels of attribution le uh, data that comes back into an AdWords account. But what Google Attribution now does is it looks at all of the different channels that a customer may have touched on their journey to actually convert. And this is where data-driven attribution comes in, because now what we can do within DoubleClick and AdWords is actually bid differently depending on where in the user journey that customer is and decide what sort of position we need our ads to show in in order to get them to convert. So if you were to take Sophology as an example, right? This isn't their data. But if they had a customer, you don't typically go online and just say, oh, I'm going to buy a sofa today. Let's type in sofas and then convert online in the first visit. That doesn't tend to happen. So people want to go online. They might have seen an ad. They might have then gone into the store. They might have sat on the sofa. They might go back online, continue researching, 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 and then buy. All of this data needs to be taken into consideration when we're actually putting together a paid media strategy and working out how we're going to bid within the search results for that customer to get them to convert. And this is where data-driven attribution can come into play. And a company like Sophology could use that. Moving on to Bing. So Bing are working on launching their expanding image ad extensions. Now, these are similar to the standard site links that you see at the bottom of lots and lots of ads now. But the difference with these is, obviously, you've got the images in there. So these can be working really well if you're bidding on generic search queries. So in the likes of Dun Elm here, Let's say they were bidding on children's bedding. Now, that's a generic search term. Somebody might not necessarily be ready to buy at that moment in time. But if you can take them from just going through to your, your generic children's bedding section of a site and land them on a more relevant product page, you're going to further entice them into the purchase funnel and get them to buy. Next up, we're going to look at Facebook. So Facebook local awareness ads have been out for a little while now. The primary uh, purpose of these is you've actually got a store that's trying to promote something to get people to actually come in and visit the store. So with Facebook, Facebook's really clever in that you can use a lot of their features in slightly different ways. So rather than just using it to try and drive footfall into a business, you can take a Facebook pin and you can place it anywhere. So like we could place a pin on this, in this arena today and start advertising to people while they're sat in here. Or the stag company, if they wanted to get smart and do some brand awareness ads, they could say, right, OK, let's find all of the different national wedding shows that are coming out over the next year. Place um, demographic advertising targeting on top of that and just say, right, I just want to target men within this destination during these time periods over these dates. And then show brand awareness ads to men whilst they're in there. Because they've got their partners going off, looking at all the different things, sitting there scrolling through their news feeds on Facebook. It's a great way of generating brand awareness at a really low cost. Um, you can also use Facebook collection ads. So these are something that came out this year. Uh, and what they basically allow you to do is place a video at the top or just images. 
But if you've got the video at the top and you're displaying um, a video that's got lots of different products in it or you're using product placement within your videos, you can show the video and then you can say, these are the featured products that sit in that video. Click through on those and then you come back through to the website. So Graham and Brown could use this. They've got some video content on their YouTube channel that's got lots of different products featured within the, uh, within the videos. Just put the video there, products below, and then try and get people back in to actually buy off the back of that. The last example from Facebook is actually in a closed beta at the moment. It was written about by a guy called John Loomer. Um, and this basically, within Facebook, you can take your CRM database and upload that as a CSV file into Facebook. And what we used to be able to do was just target people based on their email addresses and try and find people that looked like those. But now what we can do is we can upload the revenue that's attached to that email address. So if you know that you've got a customer that's spent X amount over a period of time versus a customer that's new and they've not been with you for very long, the value of that customer is going to be a lot less. But what Facebook does is they take this data, they look at how much the customers are worth to you, they pick out those email addresses, and they build you out lookalike audiences based on that. So Sky could use this. If they were to upload a list of all the people that have got their subscription, you can see how many people have been with them over X number of years and how much money those people have been worth to them. Build out a lookalike audience on those so that you know that you've got a new audience to tap into, that have got a higher propensity to want to buy, but only just not only want to buy, they're going to actually hopefully spend more with you because they're very similar to the people that are spending more with you now. Moving on from Facebook, we then go on to Instagram. So Instagram promoted stories are something that are hopefully coming out soon. I've seen a couple of these at the moment. But these are the ones where at the top of Instagram, you've got the circle. And now, you, as an advertiser, you can put a promoted story at the top and include lots of images or video content and basically promote your brand at the top. So let's say centre parks. Right? You might have a list of customers that have been on holiday with you already, or you might be trying to target people within a close proximity of one of your parks. You might have opened up a new park. You can create a really nice, engaging showcase ad. Stick that at the top of the, um, the Google of, of Instagram and promote the park to people that you're trying to reach and trying to get them into actually booking a holiday with you. Shopping ads is another thing that's coming out on Instagram at the moment. So similar to what we've seen on Facebook and Google and Bing over the years. But the difference with Instagram shopping ads is if you've got an advertiser that's showing a, an image of um, one person, for example, with lots of different clothing on, you can tag up each of the items of clothing, put the price in there, and then when people click through to that, they actually can go through to your product page. So JD Sports could use this. So any of the images that they've uploaded of a particular product or a showman or a, like a, a sportswoman, sportsman, they can tag all of the images up and try and drive people back into the website to encourage them to buy the, the clothing that that person's wearing. And then finally, let's look at LinkedIn. So LinkedIn lead gen ads, they came out, I think, tail end of last year, I think it was now. Um, I've run these alongside Facebook, and LinkedIn is generating some really good quality leads for B2B clients at a lower CPA to what we're seeing on Facebook lead gen ads. Now, lead gen on LinkedIn, it sits within the main mobile um, app. They don't work on desktop at the moment. But you can click through, if you see an ad there, you can sign up to whatever it is, and you don't need to leave the LinkedIn app. You literally stay on there, fill in your details, and then at the end, you can, as an advertiser, you get a CSV export of everybody that's signed up. So let's say the Telegraph, they could use this to try and encourage more people to sign up to their, their like, get an account without having to leave the LinkedIn interface. You can layer all the different targeting on top that LinkedIn has to offer and try and hone in and get people that you want to convert and get them to sign up and fill in the form on there. And then the final thing with LinkedIn, we've got matched audiences. Now, matched audiences are LinkedIn's version of customer match. They haven't had this yet. It's only recently come out this year. Uh, and they were a bit far behind the times in comparison to the other platforms. But what we can see on LinkedIn now, if we upload a CSV of anything, it can be your existing customers, it can be an export of your LinkedIn um, connections, it can be people that have, not, that have inquired and not purchased before. Really great for B2B. And an example of how you can use this is Honest Coffees. So if they had a load of people that had inquired about one of the industrial commercial uh, coffee machines but not yet purchased, upload a list of those people and actually target them on LinkedIn because you're targeting the individual people that, have uploaded, that you've uploaded within a CRM database, which is really, really clever. Um, so moving on from that, now these are things, one of these things I know is definitely happening. Um, three of the things I think are happening. 
So this is what I believe is going to be happening over the next sort of 12 to 18 to 24 months. And the first thing that we've started to see in Google, this is over in the US, on uh, seven posts we saw this, they're basically now, if we look back at what we were talking about at the start, we were looking at the promoted pins in Google. What we're now seeing is the ads pop up within the maps, which are making them stand out more and more. So again, in the example that we saw of Pure Gym, if this is the case where we're seeing David Lloyd and the gym with pop-up ads, and then Pure Gym below that, that may not, that, you know, those other ads that are popping up are a lot more prominent. People are more inclined to want to click on them. So I think this is going to be something that we may start to see over the coming months and years as well. Something else that we've, now we've seen a lot in the US actually is how much the paid ads are taking up space within the search results. So when Google first came out and said, right, we're doing away with the right-hand side ads, we're just going to show three ads at the top, unless it's a really, really commercial term, and then we might show four ads and three ads at the bottom. Now what we tend to see is four ads pretty much all the time at the top. I, don't, I can't remember a search that I did recently where there's a lot of things being advertised and there's not four ads at the top. But now what we're seeing is four ads appearing at the bottom in a lot of search queries over in the US at the moment. So it does make you wonder whether that's what we're going to start to see more of, whether more and more ads are going to start coming onto the search results. Uh, and I think for people that are doing organic, that's going to, again, further detract from people actually clicking on the organic listings. Um, this is actually happening. So Bing have got a partnership with Uber. Um, this was done a little while back, but they're now trying to work out how they can make better use of that partnership, right? And what you can see in this example, Macy's a bad example to use in here, but this is the only um, image that they had to, to give me. But let's use like a, um, a restaurant, for example, or a nightclub or whatever. If you're searching for a particular um, location-based business where you want to drive footfall into a store or a restaurant, and they, it's going to be quite good for them to get a cab, like you can use this uh, Bing Get a Ride with Uber, and it's kind of showing up as a site link within an ad. Click on that, it pops up the Uber app, and you can actually book your cab from directly within the search results on Bing. Now, as I say, this is something that they are testing at the moment. It's very, very much in the early stages, but this is something that we will start to see roll out over the next couple of years. And the final one, now this is speculative, but I, I just can't see why they wouldn't start doing this. So when Facebook acquired WhatsApp a couple of years back, it was a big thing about, yeah, we're not going to share data, blah, 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 blah. But if you look in the small print of the terms and conditions in the privacy settings on WhatsApp, that data is being shared. Like, they are already sharing data. Now, a few people have reported saying, I had a conversation on WhatsApp, and now I'm starting to see ads that are related to that content that we were talking about on WhatsApp. And I think that's going to start happening more and more. Whether it's just a coincidence, I don't know, but I, they would be crazy not to start sharing some of the data between the two platforms. So where do I think the future's going to go? Well, over the years, we've seen a lot of changes, as I say, within the paid media landscape. I don't think that's going to go away. The biggest thing that we're going to start to see more is within PPC, the ads are going to get a lot more personalized. We're going to have a lot more opportunity to target people rather than just targeting people en masse. The ads will be more targeted. We are going to be able to write better ads, show better creative to different people at the right times and try and get them to convert. And above everything, I think we're going to continue to see paid media grow and grow and grow. Thank you.